unable to connect. Strange when we've got such good internet. Very odd. Very odd. We're going to be talking um, about a few things, but really, uh, this is a bit like a Skype call to all my friends out there, everybody that sort of watches Steve's Kitchen. So, you know, if you've just stumbled across this and you don't know anything about the channel, not to worry. Um, but those of you friends out there, this is just a bit of a, a one way. I wish we could do a Skype call that was everybody could sit and have a brainstorm and a chat. I mean, YouTube's become so difficult to, to fathom these days. You know, I think we've talked about this with so many other friends that do YouTube when we first started doing it. This, it, it was um, different, but I think if I could sort of like, you know, if, if you if you put a, a sort of bikini bottom in every thumbnail, you seem to get lots of lots of views. Good day, Byron. How are you? It's going OK, Byron. Just this is a bit of a, a departure from my new my usual upbeat self, because I want to have a chat with you as if we were just you know talking so you can throw your ideas at me. Um, yeah, it, it, it is hard. I don't suppose, and I know all, all the, the regulars, the good YouTube subscribers that I've had for a long time will come in and have a chat today and then it's great. But yeah, I've, I've found it quite difficult this last month to, uh, I've been editing some videos. I've got such a glare reflection, mm -hmm. Michelle, in my... Let me just turn the, the brightness down of this screen. Sally says hi. Hello, Sally. Just turn the brightness down so you're not getting so much so much glare. That's better. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to chat with you a little bit about the Vietnam, Vietnam tour that we've been um, undertaking. And I've, I've found Vietnam harder this time than last time and I've been creating content and I've not been enjoying it a great deal and like I say I think with YouTube's algorithm I've actually produced some fairly interesting content but it's frustrating by the fact that the way YouTube works now that unless it's sort of got um, something sensational in it um, that I know it won't get Particularly promoted out. I mean, we did the. I did the. Uh, a made, I've made a, a making a documentary about Hanoi, and I still love Hanoi as a city. I think it's a great city. But I had a bit of a, a tough time here in Vietnam. Um, Michelle and I both. Uh, not I, but we both had a bit of a tough time uh, enjoying this trip to Vietnam after the previous trips. I suppose that the highs of being in Indonesia and Korea and Japan and uh, our big tour around Australia. Um, there's just something missing um, in, in the Vietnam tours and I've just been trying to edit some of the stuff together and it feels miserable <laughs> if one of another it's not miserable but it's it there's there's been a lot of negative things happening and I filmed it and and uh, I got to the stage where I, I can't film anymore because it's, it, it feels out out of keeping with the character of what we do on the channel but at the same time it's 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 sort of um, it's important also because I a lot of the places we've been to over the last uh, month or so we've seen other youtubers filming in those locations and they make it look so gorgeous so beautiful so picturesque slow motion sort of motions and music and sort of looking around and then I, I we went to one particular place and I remember the guy saying to me that a group of Taurus had been to Howlong Bay in, in Vietnam, which is not far from where we were at the time. And uh, they were all trying to get ahead of the tour guide group so they could take a photograph of the bay with not, not 10,000 tourists all stood in front of them. So they're all sort of leaning out with their cameras to get photographs. And it's, I think that's a little bit what YouTube's become as well. It's, it's, it's almost this sort of Facebook reality where people are, are, <coughs> are sharing content maybe and not being entirely honest. And I think that's hit us hard in Vietnam, both Michelle and I a little bit, it's hit us hard. So anyway, we've come on to have a little chat with you and kind of 
try and maybe talk it through. Michelle and I talk it through all the time, but maybe if I talk it through um, out loud, might come up with some some solutions. I, I know the content. I've, I'm working on on some videos at the moment, but they are sort of a little bit Debbie Downers, for the want of a, uh, a better word. They're kind of um, they're showing a side of Vietnam that I didn't particularly like. And um, which is a shame, you know, because I do love parts of Vietnam and I, I found other parts that I really haven't enjoyed. And um, that's hard because I know I, I have friends that have been to these locations and they have filmed. I have associates, friends, people that I know loosely that have been. And I know how they've made the videos. I know how they've made them. I know that I could turn the camera to the mountain and get the right sort of sounds and, and joy. And then I can turn the camera over here and a and, and little waterfall and make it look all very pretty. But it, you know, in the reality, when you're knee deep in dirt and sort of noise and traffic and smog and uh, it, it's, it's been, it's, it's just feels wrong to me. I think it feels wrong, probably more to, you. to you as it's, it's me, no, is it? No, no, it's both of us. We're not. Not, not feeling it, it just feels right wrong and I've, I've not and I'm, I'm I've, we're at the stage at the moment where we're sort of almost giving up you know almost giving up traveling we sort of uh, I got to that stage where I just felt like um, I almost wanted to pack it in because or at least pack in doing the videos because I don't want to show, I don't want to become that sort of strange channel of the guy that goes around places saying, you know what, yes, it is pretty there, but look at this, you know, it's, it's, it's shocking. So, there's a few people in. Baldow says it's rainy season in my place, wherever my place is. BJ Mee says hi, it's Michelle and Steve, Gary in Cambridge, UK here. And, um, Hello, Gary. Melissa Anderson says hi. And Gary says, I agree, you guys have lost your travel mojo in Vietnam. Yeah. He says, YouTube has gone a bit showbiz. You guys have stayed true to your values. Yeah, yeah but that is true a, li a little bit. And I, I, I know from when we did the cooking show, I know what, what was successful and what's not. And I know where I need to take the show if I want it to be successful. I've got to have bikini bums and sensational nonsense on there. And I really don't want to do that. Um, you know, and at the same time, we'd like to get some appreciation for what the content that we're creating. But if we if we stay on the route that we're on at the moment, I think it'll be hard. Um, I don't know. Maybe some of you might say to me, you know, Steve, Michelle, you know, don't do what you're doing at the moment. Do something else. And I don't mind you saying that. We're not going to listen to you entirely, although we are going to be appreciate your thoughts because we're pretty headstrong and in, in, in doing what we do. But it had got to the stage. Yes. G'day Kelly, Kelly's in. Yes, so Pet Petri says, hello Steve and Michelle, long time no see on my end, lol. Amy says, hi Steve. Hello Petri. Hope you're having a nice sunny day or Sunday. Yes, it probably is Sunday somewhere. Is it Sunday? <laughs> it's Monday here. Um, Moon over Miami says, I've been to uninspiring places. I feel it as soon as I arrive, I leave after two days. And that's often the way I feel, Moon over Miami, it, with some of these, play, although we've got certain agendas that we've got to keep to a little bit, and it's not like, um, there's there's the flip side to that, is, is that if you arrive at five or six locations that you don't like and you keep moving on, it's exhausting. And and it gets, it gets quite tiring for Michelle and I. I mean, I see youngsters traveling and they're maybe, Maybe when I was younger, that sort of thing was okay, but um, it's it's tiring bouncing from place to place. And, and when you do your research, um, I was thinking about this the other day because Michelle and I traveled extensively with our children when, when they were young and there was no internet, YouTube, there was no, no way of sort of going onto Google and checking things. And I was saying to Michelle, how on earth did we book in the hotels? I, I, we almost can't remember. No, we had because a day where we said we didn't like Google, we wish it wasn't there anymore. Google, Google is so all-encompassing and annoying. It's like, you know what it's like, all of you probably will know somebody like this or you may be like it yourself, where you suddenly think of something, oh, I'd like a new hat. Hat. See, the hat was there. 
And so you Google the hats and then you start re-Googling the hats and you Google and Google and Google until the point, you know, whatever happened in the, in the days when we just walked out and bought a hat, you know, and we, we were just talking the other day how when we traveled with our children, we turned up in, in South Thailand, um, uh, going to, um, a little island called, uh, Koh Phayam and, uh, we had no way of looking in advance and I can't actually even remember how we booked our hotel. I, I actually think we just rocked up and... We waited at the pier and there was people wandering around and she showed you a picture. Sort of show you a picture. <laughs> but we... And now we Google things and we, we watch because I'm a visual learner myself. I watch a lot of YouTube and what that's doing though is it's producing this ridiculous sort of Facebook. You know how all your friends are posting pictures of themselves on Facebook that look like they're having a wonderful time and then you meet them and they're really not having a great time at all. Well, VidCon was a bit like that when we went into VidCon in, 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 in two or three VidCons that we've been to now. Um, you'll meet a lot of YouTubers who, who, are, who seem um, to themselves extremely sort of confident or happy sort of people and they're all so depressed and miserable it's it's it's, it's quite quite shocking really and and i think there's uh is this too see i didn't want to do this video today i said to michelle i don't really want to do it because it's going to be negative but well, a few people have jumped in there and got at and says i love your travel logs how about more cooking vlogs around the world? I want to actually start doing more of that, but it is, we found it last time when we traveled and we only tried to do cooking as we traveled, even that was exhausting and tiring. So we said this time we wouldn't do it. And um, because it was too tiring, but we're actually finding this quite tiring. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I do, I do think that YouTube has become almost that Facebook sort of everybody, everybody um, is putting up pictures of things they're going to see and making them look better than they are. And because we're using that source to sort of find places to go to, um, you're looking at people's, I guess, I guess it was, it, if, you, if you can imagine that that person, you know, that's always putting up pictures of themselves, we met a lot of them on our travels around um, Australia, always putting up photographs of themselves at a waterfall or somewhere beautiful. And, and then you'd meet them and you'd say, oh, that's a lovely photograph. And they said, yeah, there were 7,000 tourists there. It was so hard to get in front of them to get the photograph. So if you can imagine using that as your source of tra travel information, so you're, you're using Facebook or YouTube as it is now as your source of travel information, um, you're, you're turning up to these places and Sapa is, is the video I'm working on at the moment. We've not long been to Sapa and, and I, I haven't, I, I have got some good things to say about it, but not a lot of good things to say about it. And, and another little frustration is that I filmed a whole sort of monologue to camera at Sapa. I went around and I was talking to the camera and chatting with you guys about our experiences there. And for some reason, Michelle and I had been messing with the camera, one of us, and we don't even know who did it. Probably you, Michelle. No, that one would be you. I don't touch that one. Uh, and set it to narrow. So uh, so it's right in my face. Like it's, it's like you know, right here, you know, the whole the whole vlog's about there. So he's frustrated. So I'm really frustrated because it's about an, it's, it's about 45 minutes of walking around the streets of Sapa and you're not seeing the usual sort of wide angle that I've got with all the streets behind me. you just got my face here like this. But the content is good, I think. It won't get any views unless I put a bikini bum on the on the the picture. It won't get any views. But but you, uh, my dear subscribers, will will see it. So that's and I think it's it's worth watching. But yeah, I, I it's it's become hard. We we've almost sort of um I think uh, um I think perhaps. Vietnam a little bit has, has broken us a little and we're sort of thinking of heading off uh, at one stage was even thinking of just heading back to Australia and just sort of having uh, some some downtime. Well that's what Moon over Miami says um, you might be tired of travelling for now so go home for a bit but if not how about India? Well that is one of the places we want to go to Moon over Miami but a lot of the, uh, the, the way I'm feeling at the moment I want to feel invigorated before I hit somewhere like India. Actually the next big destination we plan to go to is China and I don't want to go there feeling like this sort of thing and I don't I don't want to 
go there to places that I've researched through through online sources and get them to find again they're disappointing and um, and I don't want to really be the only person out there turning the cat you know when you're walking through the streets of a city and you're showing that street what I love to see when people are filming that is, is a little bit of camera where you can see the roads, the sidewalks are broken. There's maybe rats and cockroaches going all over. But if you hold that camera at the right sort of angle, you don't see that. Maybe you'll see just, um, just the sort of pretty angles, the fountain and, 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 and maybe an old classic car that's going past. You won't see all the other bits. So I don't, I, I, I want to be that guy that shows the, the rubbish side of, of some of these places. And I, but I don't want to just be going to rubbish places. We, Michelle and I have been to so many beautiful places and, I, and they're rarely ever places that tourists go. The, the place like Fukuoka in Japan for us was um, a breath of fresh air because it it wasn't a place that we'd heard of or, or and it was almost just um, by chance that we went there because the ferry from from South Korea landed there so we ended up in a place that I thought was very very Japanese and some people said to me subsequently oh it's not a real Japan it's not like um, it's not that fake sort of um, um, uh, Kyoto style. To be honest, you know, uh, Kyoto was lovely, but Kyoto is a is 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 a fairy tale of Japan. It isn't the real Japan. People who live in Japan live in places like Fukuoka, and they live, you know, they they and it is a wonderful place. It's a beautiful place. I love the way the bikes work on the pavements with the people and the order 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 orderly fashion of everything. The way it works. The cleanliness and that and and that is the real real japan and it's it's wonderful in itself and yes not everybody's walking around in a kimono and everybody's got a samurai sword and sort of sat under a cherry blossom tree it, it, that is not japan that's a sort of caricature of japan and that's what places like kyoto like to portray and that's that in itself is love is lovely but people don't live there. People don't, people don't live in those those environments. You know that's not Japan any any more than the people of England uh, are going around on sort of horse and carts in sort of jobbers and you know down cobbled streets. It's 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 not the, the the true thing. So I do love to try and find a beauty in a country um, outside. I'm rambling now, aren't I? That's okay. I mean, DJ B says, do you think maybe? Uh, you maybe post too many vlogs, maybe less is more. You guys could enjoy your travel and that might mean more positivity. Are you putting yourselves under too much pressure? Probably a little bit. I think there is an element of that. And, and recently, this last couple of weeks, I haven't quite been able to keep up with it because we've moved so many times that sometimes just the headache of trying to find a place that's suitable for us. And in Vietnam, all of the places we've stayed have been under construction. It's driven us to the to, to despair. The, the whole country seems to be sort of like um, um, in turmoil of, 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 of sort of building and diggers and things. So yes, uh, it, it has been a little hard um, and we probably will pull back. So that's why, but I, I'd like to do more live shows but i don't really want to do this sort sort of um heart to heart all the time i'd rather take you and show you some sort of fun things but until we find the fun things that's not going to happen and also um you know if we if we're not finding the right places as you said before moon over miami you know you can always move but we've done a little bit too much of that recently um we're feeling like a sort of uh a, you know, a steel ball and a pinball machine sort of bouncing around the country. And we just really would like to find another sort of little Fukuoka where we can stop for a month. But we haven't actually found anywhere we'd really like to stop for a month. Um, construction's now, not happening. The construction's not happening, the heat, the, the, uh, there's a, there's also been two, uh, I think probably when you travel, a, well, I don't think probably Michelle and I have travelled so, so much. I know exactly what's happening is that we probably just need a rest because we're seeing a lot of negative in, in places. Um, I got a little bit um, antsy a couple of days ago with one of the, the shopkeepers in the, the Vietnamese 
shops because they, they, they double their prices for foreigners and, and that to get in a lot of countries that happens and it doesn't always trouble me but in Vietnam it was starting to really annoy me and, and I literally um, grabbed my camera and started talking to this person and filming them and saying you know why are you charging me why and I can't use that film I'm not going to share it with you because it's 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 not it, it's it's trying to really prove a point but it was but in reality you know that stuff happens it happens all over it was happening a bit too often in vietnam and, and to be frank people of vietnam i think you have to start to sort of reel in this fact that you see foreigners as, as just a way of, of of making um making money it's got that's got to got to change so moon over miami says i love your vlogs walking the streets yes go home for now you sound tired <laughs> Um, Petri also says, sometimes when I feel like you do, I take a break and rest and come back with a better renewed spirit. We're working on that bit. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're working on, on that. And, um, you know, there. Go on. And then there's just a couple. Jay, Thailand. Jay says, you're welcome to Udon, Thailand. And Moon over Miami says, been to, yes, been to Cambodia. Yes, been to Cambodia. My, my sister lives in Cambodia, so yes, I've been to Cambodia. And um, we, we were almost going to um, uh, go to Cambodia after Vietnam, but we're, we're not 100% sure at the moment what we're going to do. We, we want to go into China, we want to spend two months in China, but right now I, I don't want to go into China because I don't think I'm in the right frame of mind. Um, just and I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, we need it. We need to stop. I, 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 I don't want to go into China. And find little things like being overcharged in shops getting on my nerves because uh, it, it will do at the moment. You know, it, it will get on my nerves. And I, I'm hopeful that that's not actually going to happen so much in China because I think there's a there's an element of there isn't a great deal of tourism in some of the areas we're going. I hope. But you only really get to see, don't you, that Facebook glimpse of everybody's sort of um, last trip to China, you know, all stood on the Chinese wall, sort of like with their sombreros on. That's why they'd be wearing sombreros, I have no idea, but they got the sombreros on and it stood on the wall doing the selfie and they're doing the little love heart. And, and it's when you get there and you have actually get dropped off sort of five miles from the wall and you've got to walk through sort of dirty old streets and sort of cockroaches and rats and climb up some sort of rickety old staircase and things and and, it, and, and it's raining or it's freezing or it's boiling hot and the tour guy's trying to fleece you sort of seven pound for a cold drink or something and you're getting really annoyed and you get to the top of the wall, pop your sombrero on, do the old heart, take the selfie, send it off to all your friends and say what a wonderful time you've had. Well, that's the big problem. We keep seeing, we're seeing the selfies and then we get there and we're thinking, oh God. <laughs> well, I think if we get the head in the right space. We'll yeah, probably, I, we I can, I can tolerate that a little more when I'm probably in a, in a better place. I think, I think, um, we, we, we had, I, I probably will have to go back to Vietnam with a better fr frame of mind in, in a year or two because I feel like, um, I don't know, it's, I've gone off Vietnam in, 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 in a little bit. I, I'm almost sort of, um, and yeah, I've, ha I've had some great experiences. So let me go through step by step and sort of see we've still got a little bit more more to do and yeah we'll we'll decide but at the moment <laughs> well, dj me says i really like those australia vlogs more of those <laughs> yeah I, we were doing um the the tour of australia i suppose in a way michelle and i were probably doing it more for ourselves yeah. and we were we're not sharing quite as much as we we did but you're right we probably shouldn't have we maybe shouldn't do so much, but but I I get quite disappointed with some of the YouTubers when they don't put up stuff, and I'm kind of expecting to see something. Some of my friends, you know, don't put stuff up for a while, and I'm sure you um, get disappointed sometimes if Michelle and I are not producing stuff. And I want to produce the stuff, um, but I was sat yesterday going through the the Sapper um, videos, and. Um, there's there's some uh, 
there's some pretty negative it's not negative it's funny in a way well that one is particularly the one that you're working with yeah it's, so it's so a different and, take on and that one. <laughs> i'm don't be surprised if the title of this video is called Crapper Sapper because that's the way I feel about it at the moment and um, and I do feel that, that a lot of people have, have, have done us a great disservice by going up to these these places and, and, and filming them in such a way that makes them look delightful and it's not delightful because actually the, 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 the original purpose of Sapper as a, as a town, I shouldn't bash particularly on Sapper but as you know Sapper was a hill station um, uh, established by the French so that they could get away from Hanoi in the summertime um, to a lovely cool sort of hill station and there would have been a lot of sort of um, Hmong indigenous people living there and uh, it would have been a fascinating place to be but it is not that now it, 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 it's, it's a million miles from that um, but if you go and have a look at it, one or two videos out there, it looks beautiful. Yes, it's very nice. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it isn't. So Chris the Butcher and Friend says, how are you, Steve? Grumbly, Chris. <laughs> and Bruno over Miami says, I don't return to places I didn't enjoy the first time. Neither do we. <laughs> I have a principle, you know, it's not entirely too true, Michelle, because I, I do... We you don't return to them. But well, some, no, some no, little... but I have, a, <laughs> I have a, a strange sort of principle that I use that if I really, really don't like a place or a person for that matter, I go out of my way to try and change my mind. So um, if I get to a town that I'm not particularly enamoured with, um, I, I, I wouldn't leave straight away because I know there's something really beautiful in that town that you've got to find. And um, and that's to my detriment sometimes because we end up staying much longer in places we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. I mean, I struggled a little bit with Japan to start with, but we stayed in... Yeah, in, and that's in, in, when we first Chile, arrived in Japan, Michelle was, Michelle was a little reluctant about, um, about some of the, the points in Japan. And I said, no, 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 you're wrong. And there's, some, there's so much good here. And we actually turned out that it was one of our, our favourite uh, stops. And uh, we've done that in many places in the past. Um, it is important when you travel. Uh, look, there's a lot of difference between going away for 10 days and going away for sort of, um, you know, two, three, four years as, we, as we've done. Uh, as travellers, you have to face a whole different uh, um, set of problems. If you're going away for 10 days, you're probably already in a, a mood, a holiday mood. Your, your whole sort of demeanor is different. You, you've probably got a lot more spending cash than you would normally do if you were spending back home. Um, so, and you're, you're often willing to tolerate a lot of sort of strange things, you know, like being sort of cramped into small places with lots of people because, you know, you're going to go and see the Eiffel Tower or, or sort of jump off or something or watch a waterfall. So, you know, but if you had to do that for your day to day, uh, life you know if that was your um your your daily grind was getting into a sort of like a great big tour group and it's being sort of shuffled along which is which is effectively i suppose what um what michelle and i uh that's, that's the life we live okay um says gary here again steve it's bizarre but your supermarket videos are my favorites yeah and when you try the burgers, etc., in the Seven Eleven, great content. Oh, thanks, Gary. I mean, I I love the supermarket videos as well, and actually, that's the stuff I really quite enjoy doing. Yeah. The, the supermarkets in Vietnam. The ones that we, <laughs> With our music. Uh, oh, in, the, in Vietnam, thinking of Japan, but yes. No, 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 no. The, yes. the Vietnam supermarkets. Mm. I wanted to do uh, some stuff. Anyway, mm -hmm. you'll see some of the videos that I've done, and and we went. You know, you saw we were we were briefly in a town called Dong Hoi, and it was a lovely town. We met some great people, and we've met some wonderful people. But I think I'm just a little bit um, uh, I'm a little bit uh, uh, you know, uh, mojo gone. I guess that's mm -hmm. the that's the thing, and we need that. Um... So uh, the, so this I, I kind of do wish we had a two way. Uh, I've got a glass. I can just get some water. I'm drinking the tea, but it's it's uh, 
it's been so hot and dry. Drinking way, way more water than I normally do. Come say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Here she is. I'm back to my little corner now. She's sat in the corner. <laughs> little Jack Horner. <laughs> eating her. Little Jack Horner. Down the corner, eating his not curds. It's nice curds and whey. <laughs> you, at least we've got the same levels of dyslexia, <laughs> Michelle. We've got in his thumb and pulled out a plum. Yeah. So J Thailand and Jay says, if you want to see a nice place to see and live, go to North East Thailand, can get a flat nice for 350 to 400 a month with US European people. Uh, North East Thailand, that's... Um, that up near Chiang Mai? And no, no, there? no, it's uh, Udantani, Udantani, uh, no. Uh, East. So it's that bit up there. Yeah, it? towards the Lao border. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a possibility. Uh, we've we've really got to um, we've really got to uh, be thinking about this uh, China trip. So at the moment, what are you laughing at? Well, I'm just reading Sally's comments. She says, "You and Michelle are amazing. Your videos are great. You should go home and take a couple of weeks off and rest." It's it would what if we could right now, Sally to be honest, I said I did go through some stages this last few days where I said to Michelle, I said, to, you know, just look at a flight, let's go. Because it is Udon, is it? Yes, Udon Con Can. Yeah, Udon Tani, Udon Con. So I don't what's the difference between Udon Tani Tani, I think it's T H A N I and Udon Con Can. Um they're similar areas, I think. So yeah, I had said to Michelle on, on, we've had some really bad hotel choices as well. Some of the, we've made some of the worst hotel choices. Well, that's where Google got her on my nerves, wasn't it? Because I was watching And that's what we were saying the other day. We said, how on earth did we used to, we traveled for quite a number of years with our children doing very much this way before YouTube was ever around. And we had no method of going onto the internet to check things. And we had no problems at all. I remember dr driving all the way around the US and we would pick up the little green books. Yes. If you, those of you in the Amer America probably know them, there was a little green book in every um, state that you came to that had a list of all the hotels in them. Uh, they used to be in a certain grocer, uh, uh, fast food chain, I think, as you That's drove right, Hungry yes. Jacks or yes. somewhere like that. And you'd get this little green book flip through the pages and each of the towns from that state had a list of hotels and you just and they had special deals on them they were always like super cheap like you know be like 30 bucks a night for for a hotel um, sometimes even less than that and and as long as you sort of took the coupon out and handed it over you, you that's that's how we got around the US, got the US. I, if any of you can remember the name of those books they're probably still available but they're probably on an iPad now and <laughs> doing it differently but um, every state in America used to have that when we used to travel around Southeast Asia I have no idea I think we just used to pull up and find hotels as you say yeah. at the rail at the railway station well, I remember it when we went to New Zealand we turned up at the airport and there was a board and we looked on the board and you picked a hotel and you I don't know how you contacted them, but you probably had an information center there. Yes, Do you know how yes. quickly we forget? <laughs> and now this blasted Google, <laughs> and that's going back to my, my earlier um, point was, we all know somebody or we know ourselves spend way too long researching stuff. And I sometimes almost um, shake with fear when I sort of say, oh, well, let's think about getting a new camera because we maybe, we, we, nowadays we might research for sort of nine months no, the camera and then <laughs> you'll find a thousand reasons why you shouldn't particularly get that camera because of course in the next two months the latest version of that camera will be coming out and this one will have a cuckoo clock in it. So you, 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 you put it off and you wait. It's the same when you want to buy a phone. Now in the old days, you just went out and you bought a camera. And you, it was probably, you know, Canon probably released one camera every nine years. So, so it wasn't so complicated. Of course, now they're, they're releasing a phone every sort of three minutes. And so if you buy a phone uh, this afternoon, it's probably sort of dated and everybody's sort of chortling at you. Mind you, why they'd be chortling at you, because the phone I'm talking on right now, which is a Note 9, is a pretty up-to-date phone, looks identical to my old Note 4. It's a big slab of glass with a touch screen and sort of Fisher-Price buttons on it. So it's not really that 
much of a leap forward in technology, but we somehow are duped into thinking there is. So Chris Cialta says, could you do a video of what you've done before you were on YouTube? I remember you saying you had a farm. It would be interesting to hear about that. I wish, and, and, and some days Michelle and I even talk about going back to that lifestyle because um, we had quite, we've had some quite astonishing um, lifestyles, uh, uh, chapters in our life. And um, for, for quite a few years, we had a self-sufficient sort of farm in, in France where we raised um, um, a, a few pigs and, and geese and sheep. Um, sheep. And, sheep. You know, we had all, all, we had our own livestock and uh, um, we would fatten up the turkey for Christmas and jokingly named them after Michelle's parents. <laughs> Because they were coming for dinner. Because <laughs> they were coming for dinner, so I would sort of say, you know, we're fattening them up, so and so for, for Christmas. And we, you know, we had a fairly, uh, yeah, it would have been. Uh, I don't, I don't know how I could video that. Uh, I, I was going through a stage in my life. Um, and I think he's just saying talking to talk about it too. Yeah, to talk about it because we haven't really got a lot of photo evidence. You know, we didn't sort of document that lifestyle. We didn't film it because there wasn't really the need to. So it would be a bit other than telling you the stories of which I can tell you so many. I mean, there's, there's uh, but there are other parts of our life, you know, where we, we've uh, lived in different countries in the world. Sri Lanka, we, we lived for some time in Sri Lanka and, and I can tell you about our children sort of climbing the, uh, the, the mango trees and spending my daughter spending hours in the mango tree in the garden sort of with a friend from next door, a uh, little Sri Lankan girl that, uh, parents lived next door and they would be up in the mango tree and quite often the um, the maid who worked for the family next door because in these countries quite often people have maids and helpers and, and what have you but the young girl would go up the mango tree it was a big tree and she'd go up there and serve them sort of you know take their take their pack lunches and things up the tree and they'd all sit up there sort of uh, eating and so yeah, there's been some some interesting chapters, but and I suppose if YouTube had been around, we'd have we'd have shared it. Gosh, I wish I'm kind of glad it wasn't. <laughs> so Jay Thailand Jay has lived obviously in the northeast of Thailand for twenty years. Oh, um, good man. Um, the northeast is interesting, but mm -hmm. I believe it's developing very very quickly, and it's one of those places that that, that possibly um, you know a, a little bit like Myanmar and or the Burmese areas of the world, Lao, that are changing probably quite rapidly. Now I think what's happened sadly in North Vietnam and why personally and a lot of people are doing the Hajiang, Hajiang loop mm -hmm. which is um, up in the north of, of, of uh, Vietnam but to the, to the point that there are tens of thousands of tourists going up there on a daily basis doing this, this this loop which is beautiful and scenic and has got sort of still some remnants of the original um, indigenous people in that area but the numbers are getting so high now that it's really destroying it's destroying um, the whole of north north vietnam and uh, I, I if i could do anything for north vietnam at all it would be to somehow turn the tap off of tourists that are going in there because uh, it's not just the European, uh, American, Australian sort of uh, tourists, but the tens and tens of thousands of Chinese and Koreans and Japanese and um, Malay and you know people from all over the world that are going into these areas, and it's it's it, it's too much money. We've got to, we've got this, we're destroying any ounce of charm some of these places have. And um, part of me wants to encourage people to go off and see the world, and, and, and another part of me wishes that just a handful of us would stop doing it. <laughs> because uh, it, it's, and, uh, so the, the, I'm, I'm guessing if you've been up in north, uh, northeastern Thailand for these years, you'll have seen some massive changes, because um, from what I understand, Udan Thani now has is, uh, is got quite a big uh, burgeoning expat community. It's good night, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, what we will get up there sometime. I want to do those sort of northern parts, um, uh, also up into uh, Burma and uh, and Laos. Um, but the big, the, the next two big countries that we want to visit are probably China and and India, and, and I really want to do it. But but one of the reasons I come on here tonight is just to talk this through. Um, uh, brainstorm with the brain uh, with, but, but get some feedback from from you you and you're you're probably saying all the right things to be honest I said, do hong kong too look um djme uh i lived in hong kong well i didn't live in hong kong michelle and i and my family lived in hong kong for many years and i'm so uh connected to Hong Kong in so many ways. It's, it's one of my, possibly one of my favorite countries in the world, but it's a history, it's a part of my history. And I don't like going back to places because they never feel as good um, when you go back. But I feel desperately sad for what's happening in Hong Kong because, no, that's not true actually. I, I feel very proud of the Hong Kong Chinese. I feel proud of of the young people there and what they're doing and I feel like some sort of solidarity with them I, I just you know because uh, when Hong Kong uh, was handed over in 1997 to to the Chinese uh, returned in, in, inappropriately re returned by the way um, it was only the new territories that was leased out uh, to the British the, the Hong Kong Island was not uh, Margaret Thatcher and her officials made a great mistake um, in their ignorance. Anyway, when Hong Kong was returned to the Chinese in 1997, I was actually um, in Hong Kong in a junk boat, floating. We were we were out in in Victoria Harbour, uh, watching the outgoing um, um, Hong Kong governor leaving on. Where was it the Queen Mary? I don't know what I forget on, on the yacht Britannica or where whatever yes. it went on. Um, so we were in the harbour watching the great event. Fireworks were just amazing. It was a beautiful time to be there. Um, and I feel a great kinship and, and f I still have so very many friends in, in Hong Kong. Um, though I haven't been there for a long, long time because I don't, as I say, we don't often like going back to places just because a lot of... One of the problems with going back to a place is is what, but particularly in transient places like Hong Kong and people who live there know will know what I mean by this. Is there's a lot of people come and go, so so you often go back. A lot of what you recall from those places has gone, so it's not it's n genuinely not the same. It's not like going back to the village where you grew up and you find everybody still there doing the same things, but they've got older and you can sort of relate to a lot of things. Places like Hong Kong, quite often you'll go back and the street that you were uh, lived or worked in has, has, has been you know, demolished and rebuilt by huge high rises and things. But I do, if I see Hong Kong, I know Hong Kong like the back of my hand. I mean, I know the streets and I know um, I know uh, so much about the, the, the colony. But yeah, I feel very proud, proud of the, the, the Hong Kongs, but also a little saddened because I don't think it's remarkable how quickly this 50 years is passing, you know, since the handover, this, oh gosh, it's, it's, it's going by so quickly. And uh, at the time, you know, there was a confidence that people thought, well, that's 50 years away, it doesn't matter, we can get on with life and just, you know, enjoy our democracy and freedoms. And of course, those freedoms and democracies have been eroded away over time. And and the people are really starting to feel the sort of uh, wolf at the door now that, 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 that uh, it isn't going to be that much longer before the, the whole of Hong Kong is, is just part of um, a, gr a, a greater uh, body. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with China. I mean, China's a beautiful and wonderful country in its own, is in its own right. But Hong Kong hasn't got... Um, it has, it has no shared history with the development of, um, it has no shared history with their development, its legal system and the way the streets were built, the way the buildings were built, the way the sort of, uh, um, just the way that business is done in Hong Kong is just 
it's just chalk and cheese to the way things are done. And, and the Hong Kong people themselves are a different breed. They're not even, you know, they haven't um, had so many years work uh, living in a, in, a, um, in, in, a, in a society that, that has a certain ethos. I'm trying to be politically correct. I don't want to be negative. I, I love China as much as, as I love Hong Kong. Um, but they're different, you know, and I think if anything, uh, uh, Hong Kong needs to remain Hong Kong. And I wish it could. I don't know if the youngsters will be able to pull it off. Um, but, uh, you know. DJ and me said absolutely loved it in Hong Kong last year. We'd love you guys to do the Great Wall, Terracotta Army, etc. in China. Mm. Well. <laughs> we might be doing different bits of China. <laughs> we probably will, you know, I think if you know know me long enough to sort of hear what I, what I say quite often is, I probably would like to see the Great Wall. Terracotta Army, I'm not that interested in it. I'm not, uh, if I was in Paris, you wouldn't get me anywhere near the, the Eiffel Tower. It's just, I'm not, I'd, I'd much rather sit in a Parisian street in a cafe talking with people from Paris and, and just interacting and going, you know, tasting the, the breads and croissants and uh, um, uh, the beautiful uh, charcuterie they have there. Or be, I'd much rather be in maybe Kunming in China um, looking at the way they create their foods or the way they actually build their houses or, 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 or do their carpentry than I would go and see some, some um, you know, go and queue with about 10 million people to see some sort of, uh, uh, something that I've seen a, a million times before in photographs and it's, and it's, and, and what, and try to get ahead of the crowd <laughs> and squeeze my camera through about 8,000 sort of tourists to get a photograph of something that uh... yeah. Amy says please may we do a live in India well we hope to Amy if, oh, we, if we, get... we if we get to India and I, and I can't see any reason why we won't um, we'll, we will do a lot in India uh, I'll try um, so we're getting a feeling from everybody now so some people are saying do less more is less I think I'm saying just rest up a bit and get your mojo back. If we could find a place now and we're thinking of, of we're not sure where we're going to go in Southeast Asia at the moment, um, but we're thinking of trying to find somewhere um, in the next week or 10 days where we could just stop for a few weeks. Yeah, that, that will help a great deal. It will. Um, but it's, it, it's a lot easier said than it is done, <laughs> I can tell you. There are so many places you think, oh, well, I, I know, uh, this, this is going to be just perfect. Uh, it's like, um, you know that we were just in um, Hoi An. Uh, and I've met dozens of people that said, oh, Hoi An's lovely, yeah. And they'd all been there for three days, you know, maybe on a sort of tour group and what have you. And I, I didn't like Hoi An at all. I, I think Hoi An was another one of those. And, and to be to be honest, this is where I'm starting to lose it a little bit because we were in Hoi An just last week for almost a week and I filmed nothing, uh, mainly because I just could not bring myself to point the camera at anything and say that I was enjoying it. I wasn't. And, and then I thought to myself, well, this isn't because you're not enjoying Hoi An, Hoi An, it's because you're not enjoying traveling at the moment and you need to sort of, you need to get and rest. And Hoi An was not a place to rest. Uh, you, you may have seen the live stream that I did from Hoi An and we were fighting sort of to get through crowds of people to go and see these lanterns. You know, I've seen a million lanterns. It was like, you know, it was charming when we got down there, but everybody was trying to get their hand in your pocket to get money out of you. Everything was four times the price. We'd walked along. We walked almost five kilometers, six kilometers to get there. And I thought I'd get a taxi back because a taxi generally is around about, you know, 40,000 um, um, Vietnamese dong to get back. But of course, we were in Hoi An, so they wanted 200,000 dong to get back. And I thought... Oh, we got frustrated with that because I didn't want to pay 200,000 dong to go sort of like um, a few kilometers. And, uh, but we saved the day, we went and had nice coconut ice cream. <laughs> we, 
sat out for a little while and then the price came down so then we <laughs> we did that's that's what you do you see we, we i said to michelle look there's an ice cream shop over there we go over and we got um a, a, a proper little coconut mm, nice. shell filled with coconut ice cream and they put lots of little candy bits in with it um and we sat there until most of the tourists had left because it was getting to the time when everything was shutting up and um and then we jumped in a taxi and it was sixty thousand dollars so it was that's all right the Moon Over Miami says, putting my house up for sale, planning traveling like you to the east, Japan, Russia, China, done Europe, Africa, USA, and Canada. Sounds cool. That sounds cool. Putting your house up for sale, would you be better to rent your house maybe? I don't know, you decide. Um, please test everything you want to do. If you want to do what we're doing, Bear in mind, Michelle and I have been traveling for a long time, and it's not just the four years. We've been probably traveling a great deal of our adult lives. Um, you know, uh, Moon Over Miami, give it a try. Uh, put your, keep your foot firmly in one camp for a little while and give it a try for four, four months, five months. Um, and just make sure that it's the right thing for you before you make any sort of strong commitments. Jacqueline Hill says, you will find the perfect place, no worries. Oh, we will. We'll get no there. worries, Jacqueline. <laughs> no worries. Now, Moon Over Miami says, GATT agreement converted to WTO in 1997 with 123 signatory countries has eroded democracy throughout the world. It, 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 it has, and it, it's happening these these unelected groups of of sort of bureaucrats are have a are sort of sprouting up all over like uh, i was saying was it who was the who was the ones in um, um south korea that was the g8 no oh yes um, it wasn't the g8 it was the yes i remember you know you'll you might recall that we went to this huge in in south korea in busan and there was a it wasn't the g8 it was one of those groups Michelle can check it quickly. Um, but they built this monster of building and it cost absolutely billions of, of dollars to, to build, build. Millions of dollars to build the building, but probably billions of dollars when you look at the infrastructure that went into this, this area to build this place up. For one meeting in about 1975, I think it was, or 85, they had one meeting in this building and then they just walked away and abandoned it. And now the whole of sort of South Korea, uh, they're, they're, keep, they're keeping it all pristine and beautiful. They've had a second meeting in the building since. The whole room where all of our politicians sat and talked fluff for hours, um, that room's been preserved. It's a huge, great big amphitheater theater of a room, all sort of gold and luster and teak and, 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 and it's just that and then I actually went on to the internet because I thought where are they meeting this year and uh, it turns out that they were meeting in Papua New Guinea and they were at it again I looked onto the internet there they APEC. were the APEC group the APEC group and it's the same for the G8 it's the same for all of these groups um, the, the, so the APEC were building a place in Papua New Guinea another ridiculously huge arena of a building that was being built, criticised by, this is in a com country that, where the average income, I think, is something like about $50 a month or, or something ridiculous. And they're building this thing, it was costing billions of dollars to build. It was in an area that nobody lives, so it was getting no use to anyone else. And I watched a little video, you can, you can watch it on, on YouTube. They, uh, they were, I think it was the Guardian, were doing a sort of an expose because the, the, the Prime Minister of that country had ordered in um, 40 uh, Aston Martins, black Aston Martin sedan cars, because he wanted to have enough. Car and they were, I think they were like 400,000 each or something. It's, it's, the figures could be telephone numbers, are ridiculous. So he bought all these cars just so that all of our politicians from our countries, Australia, sadly, United Kingdom, America, could come over to Papua New Guinea and be driven around in an Aston Martin car from the venue that they built for tens of millions of, of, of pounds. 
And because they built it in the middle of absolutely nowhere, the building's going to be no use, they, there's nowhere for anyone to stay. They, they, could, they decided, oh, well, there's no, no hotels anywhere near here. We have nowhere for the... So they shipped in several cruise liners, luxury cruise liners, and docked them on the edge of the, the, the harbour near where this place was built and put all the politicians up in these luxury cruise liners with sort of banqueting and food and things, and then shipped them in these Aston Martin cars from, from the... It... it, it but it beggars them, it doesn't. Frustrates you, doesn't it? It frustrates you. So yes, these groups, the European Union, um, the, 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 the people in Brussels who are building, building after building after building for an unelected group of, um, uh, of, of politicians. I always remember the first time um, back in uh, Oh, I don't want to get into politics. Let's <laughs> not, not go down there. Uh, Chris says, have we ever been to Ireland? Chris, Ireland? No. Yeah. Ireland, we, so desperately want to go. Michelle yes. and I have been wanting it. It's really high on our list. We've got to get a bit nearer to it yet. It, <laughs> it's one of those countries that holds a certain charm. I'm not going to look at it on YouTube or Facebook because uh, I don't want to get disappointed. But I think, um, I think the China, uh, I think the Irish have got such a good attitude and, and, and towards the, you know, towards the food and just, I don't know, it's the crack, isn't it? The, the Irish crack. Um, so yeah, I, th I think uh, Ireland's going to be up there. I'd like to spend a bit more time up in the north in Scotland if we got mm -hmm. there as well and go up to Scotland and sort of the Gaelic countries and do a bit of exploring, maybe even to Wales. Okay. Um, my uh, great grandfather came from Wales, so um, be quite interesting to go back and visit some places. I don't think I'd, I'd, I'd know much. So Lou says, I want to visit Scotland and Wales too. They also say, how did you guys like Korea? I want to go soon. Korea's lovely. Um, we meet a lot of Korean tourists, by the way, and I will say to you Korean tourists, um, I don't know if it's, uh, to, no, I will say to my dear Korean friends, is it something about Koreans, when they get outside their own country, that they're not quite as polite and as quiet. quiet and as tidy when they leave Korea. Because I keep meeting large groups of Koreans all throughout Vietnam and they are loud and obnoxious and aggressive and messy. And I don't know, and I, I suspect what's happening is because these are cheap places to go that it's attracting a certain type of Korean tourists and maybe the ones when we were in Korea were just delightful, lovely, polite, um, kind people and Korea itself is, uh, South Korea we're talking about of course, <laughs> I haven't visited North Korea, um, is such a wonderful place. I don't know what's happening though. What's happening South Korea with your tourists? Yes, man about us has Koreans are rude in Thailand. Um, there's something wrong with the tourism industry that's coming out of South Korea. And I, I, I'd say this to my friends that I that I've met and, and, and uh, the friendships we've made subsequently. There is something wrong. And yet I've met some lovely people from South Korea also outside. But the general thing is a throng of this sort of very, very sort of um, ill-behaved, noisy, um, uh, it, it's you, you're earning a, re a reputation you really shouldn't be proud of. Um, so that's my two pence. So Angelie says, "Hi, Michelle and Steve." Hey, Angelie. Do you ever feel homesick? Angelie, that's a little bit what this is about today. I think um, if we ha had a, anywhere really that felt. Obviously, going back to the family always yeah. feels like home, but because we've been traveling for a long time, we, we, we don't, we're not quite sure where we feel is home at the moment. Um, but I almost booked a flight back <laughs> home uh, today. Yeah. Um, but like I say, the philosophy that we have is, is, is stay longer to try and um, to, to turn that frown upside down, to try and but we desperately do need a stop at the moment and it, it, it could end up being home, but I would like it not to be because we, we've got a 
we've we've got a video that I've been making that's uh, how to get a Chinese is to teach show people how to get a Chinese visa in uh, to get into China. And the reason we got that visa is because we want to go into China for a couple of months at least and, and spend some time um, uh, visiting China and learn a bit more about Chinese food and Chinese culture. So yeah, get a little homesick, um, but I'm not sure. You know, homesick sometimes um, is is a dichotomy that so it's, it, 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 I'm not sh sure where home is. So yes. But no. <laughs> Moon over Miami says, I'm, I'm saying go with your instinct, you're tired, go home a bit, go with your instinct or feelings. Well, that, that, is the, that can be the feelings, but there's there are big steps, you know, just to go back home now. This is quite expensive, you know, to just to, to, to come off the track. If you're on a track and you've set yourself a, dr a drift to go in a certain direction, then you say, okay, now let's go back and just regroup. That whole event itself can be quite expensive and because we don't want to stop so we've got to carry on going again so we go back and then you sort of come all the way back out and start all over again and we've, we've already um invested so much mentally and physically and financially getting to where we are at the moment that to sort of reel it back feels a little bit of a um a cop out but it, it, it isn't and we will if we if we decide that uh, enough's enough we, we'll have a break to be honest, Michelle and I don't need a lot of a break. Uh, a month would be nice, just somewhere, just to to stop. But we 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 thought um, we really, really, really believed that Hoi An was going to be our Shangri La to stop. Uh, and to be honest, it, it was the most it was the most dreadful, dreadful town. Um, and I would not recommend Sapa or Hoi An. I think Hoi An. I have no idea how that place has become uh, such a popular tourist destination. So Man About Oz says Koreans are cool but once they bunch up it's a different story. I, I think that can be the same with almost any. I don't want to get particular about the Koreans, it was just a, a maybe a flippant remark about uh, just to sort of remind if there's any of my Korean friends watching, to, I don't know what anyone watches from Korea, but basically it's not about Koreans, it can happen the same. Um, I always remember some years back, Michelle and I were um, staying in Italy and, and we, were, we just had so many, we've got a lot of Italian friends and this is not when we were in Sicily just a, a, a year or two back, this is some years back. And we were loving the charm and the enthusiasm and the sort of like gregariousness of the Italians and then we went down to Croatia to Dubrovnik in Croatia or I don't think it was Dubrovnik I think we were in another town but we were somewhere in Croatia and and we kept meeting big bunches of Italian tourists and they were the most horrendous people to meet outside of Italy because they were just so rude to the to the locals and it felt very uncomfortable. So yeah, it's now it sounds like I'm picking on the Italians. It's nothing. It's nothing to do with any particular um, uh, ethnic or or, or, or uh, colloquial type groups. It's just what people are often like when they go abroad. I'm sure it's the same in Thailand when you get sort of like a few thousand Aussies out there. Or, or uh, man about Oz said, "I'm not Korea bashing far from it. I like them." Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, Lou says, "Yeah, I agree. I think it's the same with everyone when they go to these places together." But it's important that we that we try to 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 not be those people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't, I don't. But but there's a lot of truth in what what you're saying but the Koreans when you actually go to Korea is same as if you go what I was saying there when I was in Italy I, I couldn't um, love the Italians more but when I got to Croatia which is right near the border of, of Italy very close to Italy and uh, there were large swathes of, of but at the time you see I suspect what happens is Croatia at that time and this was probably maybe about 2002, 2003, at that particular time, Croatia was a very cheap place to go for Italians for a holiday. And um, when a place is a cheap place to go, it doesn't always in, in it doesn't always attract the creme of the country. It can quite often attract some, some of the rougher elements. And they just go in there to sort of get drunk and uh, 
you know, young lads who just got one or girls that want to go out and, and just be, be, be act as badly as they can without their parents seeing them. <laughs> Do you need more water? Yeah. I'll get my blue one, that'll be fine. So we talked quite a long time. I've, I've nattered on. I was um, man about Oz, Oz says, wow, 242,000. I was with you guys when you had 4,000. Wow. Well, if you were with me when I had 4,000, then were the days. <laughs> I think when I got 5,000, we would, that was, uh, I was um, around about that time. Would that have been when Anna, the little Japanese girl, I call her a little, little yes. Japanese girl, I presume she was little because she had a lovely little temperament. We did a, a cake competition and Anna from Japan, um, who was a, a strong follower at the time, won the competition that we were doing. She, she came up with this idea that I should make a cupcake with edamame beans or peas in the cupcake. And I just thought that was a really cool idea. So I created this cupcake and we made the little peas in the pods and we sat them inside the pods with the little um, little, little faces peering out of the pods with the eyes. And uh, yeah, Anna. And I always, I, 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 we lost, we lose contact with subscribers as you do over the years. And I always kind of, even when I was in Japan, I was hoping that Anna would reach out and we could say hello to her, but she's probably, you know, life goes on. She was a student, wasn't she? She was so a student she, in England going back to yeah, Japan. Yeah, so she probably just, you know, uh, I don't know, she may have got married and yeah. settled down, had a family, who knows? May have uh, done any number of things, but uh, yeah, they, they were the days. <laughs> and we will, look, a lot of you, have asked and i probably this is a this is a pointless message because in a in a video this long it's not going to hit the right people but youtubers out there young youtubers or older youtubers whoever you are you're going to you're going to say one day i want to do a vlog okay i want to be a vlogger or i want to be a youtube uh, chef and i want to go and teach cooking and you're going to get, have a certain thing, like I might have said I wanted to go and do charcuterie and teach people about how to prepare certain meats, or, or I want to go and vlog and I want to show um, a certain cities, you know, I want to go around cities and show people. And then one day, you'll put on a pink hat and jump into a bowl of soup and start swimming backstrokes in a nappy and diaper for my American friends. And, if, and it's going to go viral, and everyone thinks it's fantastic. And then the next day, you're going to go and start showing London again, you know, and nobody's going to watch it. And so you think, damn, I've got to, you know, I'll do something else ridiculous. I'm going to put on a, a bowl of hat and, and swim in a bowl of custard with a, you know, uh, and and it's the same. Well, do you know? Do you understand what I'm getting? At? You 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 start to follow a path you didn't because the audience demands it of you because the audience says that you've got to swim in custard otherwise you know they're not going to watch it anymore and then suddenly for about a year swimming in custard and baked beans and all these things seems like fun seems like fun you're having a, a giggle and a laugh and then after about 12 mo months 14 months it becomes a chore just like any other job and then it becomes a hateful chore because actually you didn't want to do this in the first place. You didn't want to be the guy that, you know, this guy that uh, only makes pink flowery cupcakes because that's what sells. You wanted to do better. You wanted to actually talk to people about eating healthy and, and learning where their produce comes from and understanding how to make things and create things healthier and cleaner. But because, you know, pressure from the internet is there, it will say to you, you know, you must do more chocolate cakes, you must do more more uh, Nutella, you must do more this. And, and, and for a short period, that stuff feels okay. Now, I got a message recently from a viewer on one of the videos and said, look, if you're not going to do cooking anymore, I'm, I'm not going to watch your videos. And I thought, to me, you see, that's just water off a dog's, duck's back. It hurts. Everything hurts, you know. But I sort of thought, well, look, I'm not going to live my life for you. You know, I'm not going to do what you need me to do. 
just because it makes you feel better. But a lot of people making videos on YouTube nowadays do. They, they end up sort of drifting into a style of filming that's not what they set off to do. And the problem with that in, and, and with everything in life is, is that you end up back on the grind of doing something that you literally do not enjoy doing. And even if you're really, really successful, so, so what I would... As Lou says, you lose your way, I guess. Round of applause. <laughs> yeah, they, they do. They do. You've got to kind of stay true. So the fact that we're doing these travel videos at the moment and not really getting the views that we should, and like I say, a little bit frustrating in a way. Should I put a bikini bottom in every sort of thumbnail to get the views? No, that's not uh, not not the best thing. Because if I go out and, and if I see something like that, I'll film it. You know, there was a, a lady in Indonesia walking around in a bikini, and I just thought it was quite ridiculous because she was in the in a street in a Muslim, particularly in a Muslim area or or very an area of, of the world where she was shouldn't have, should have known better. You know, um, there are places you know you don't go into a um, into a sort of supermarket in a Muslim country in a bikini uh, when. It's just not that when the women are all very modestly dressed. Anyway, so so yes, I'm not going to go out sort of looking for that sort of stuff. But there are times when people sort of go out. I've got another friend. I, I won't mention names. He's, a, he's got a very successful travel channel. And I've been friends with him for some time. And I know that a lot of his stuff, even though he's very successful, that he loves to show different parts of the world. But he only really gets great traction when he has a bikini clad girl jump into a pool or something and he uses that as a as a thumbnail and and the the the, the way he could actually um, uh, react to that is to only go and film that sort of stuff but i know it would go against the principles of what he started to do so anyway a little message to people out there in youtube if you set off and you say right i want to teach people how to groom and take care of dogs right and then you sort of start doing it and you're not getting the views and then suddenly you paint the dog pink and stick it in a tutu and make it walk on a ball and everybody thinks it's fantastic and you do successful if you carry on painting those dogs pink and putting them on balls you'll get loads of views and you will get a happiness of your life for about a year and at the end of it you'll you'll suddenly think that's not what i set out to do and i'm not only unhappy doing this i'm really unhappy doing this and uh so stand, stand by your guns and try to be successful doing something that you enjoy in life and and that's the only way you'll ever get because happiness is the only thing and right now michelle and i need to sort of find our own little sort of um we're just yeah. we're getting there yeah. we're getting there we're getting there jay tyler and jay says i've always liked your way my wife likes your thoughts on recipes and well you know you mentioned uh, before about you know like to know about how uh, um uh, you, you you mentioned before about our life living on our farm and we've had a few different chapters in our lives quite unusual adventures in our lives but um i still look back with one the greatest fondness of when we were we were very close to self-sufficient you know we grew grew vegetables and i i wouldn't mind actually going back to that style of life so but don't be surprised <laughs> if we if we take an about term but it almost certainly will be about food yeah. because we've always had a passion about food. Um, we've always had, um, both Michelle and I, and Michelle used to, you, you baked bread on a daily basis for our children. We made our own bacons and hams, sausages. Um, uh, you know, so we've always been very passionate about food and that will come through it isn't something I can do while I'm traveling. I'll, I'll try to share with you some of the passion about the food, but I'm learning. That's what I'm traveling for at the moment. I'm learning. Sometimes I want to go and see somebody in the street and see how um, how they how they're putting something together, and I might not want to film it because I want to really get a genuine reaction from them and not sort of the coco the clown sort of acting up for the camera. So sometimes I've got to le learn, and we got. A lot of that in Mexico and one day I tell you one day I'm gonna uh, be uh, going back to Mexico learning a bit more and and we are going to be really uh, expanding on our, our Mexican
elements to repertoire. The man about also says, hit the thumbs up. Yes, please hit that thumbs up. Yeah, hit the thumbs up. And also says, I just, I just like the way you two make a relaxed vid. I work 12 hours a night and your vids are drama free. Drama free. No yeah. dramas, no as dramas. we say in Australia. Absolutely. No dramas. Um, yeah, and hit, hit the thumbs down if you, if, you, yeah. if you... And I don't mind you saying, Steve, if you're not going to cook, I don't want to follow you. Because actually, if you don't want to follow us, if you don't want to follow us while we're traveling, then you'll never really understand when I cook. Because... Oh, he's getting deep now. Yeah, because it's not... <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> Oh, she's flat on the floor now. No, not really. Um, yeah, because because the, it's 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 not about. It's never been about um, uh, cooking so much as uh, my battery's low. I'm sure. Oh. Put the put the plug or plug in, please. Plug in. So um, yeah, it's never really been just about the food. It's trying to encourage people. And I think probably a little bit my channel trailer says a lot of what I mean. It's food is all about sort of learning and sharing and, 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 and but also on top of everything else, it's trying to get young families and, and youngsters and people to create and cook and you know, just to look at something Maybe things their their parents used to make, and uh, that looks a bit crook. I'm just going to plug you in. Sorry. And turn it on. Ladies and jelly spoons. Yeah, so it's kind of it's it's really I've always wanted to sort of like get people to understand, you know, what goes into bread, what goes into pastry, what goes into the sauces that you make, and what goes into the things that you buy on the cheap. Well, no, not on the cheap. Why it is that that packet processed food you buy from the supermarket would be so much easier to um, to make yourself and and I've never stood with the art the argument when people say they haven't got the time because actually most of the time um, producing your own food is much quicker than actually heating up in the microwave or or going to the shops to even purchase it. So anyway, that, that's <laughs> I'm probably losing some of you, but that's but that that will come out. And um, see, I feel a bit more chipper. Yeah, so you, you've cheered up now. So Amy um, says, "Love your flapjack recipe on your channel." You know why you love your you you know why you love that, Amy? It's because I love <laughs> flapjacks. <laughs> And it was one of those things as, as kids that uh, your, your mum would make, you know, flapjacks. And if any of you haven't had flapjacks before, you might you might not like them because because they they they're sort of like a um, um, a comfort food for a lot of people that grew up with them. But it's all that beautiful oatmeal, you know, that rolled and not that fast oats. It's, it's got to be proper oatmeal. This is the nonsense I'm going to sort of preach about. You know, don't use fast oats. Nobody wants an oat that's been partially cooked in some corporate sort of vat and then put into a packet. You just want rolled oats. And oatmeal and treacle, all sort of well, um, golden syrup, should I say, all sort of cooked up, deliciously sticky and gooey. And real flapjacks, because you know when you go sometimes now to a, 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 a supermarket in Australia or in I don't know who our sales of Australia, England, uh, Europe, uh, sorry, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, they probably all sell flapjacks or versions of them. But if you go into a supermarket and buy a flapjack, it is rubbish. It's at, even the best ones, even if it's, you know, organic Mrs. Smudgery's uh, homemade secret recipe flapjacks from sort of, uh, you know, in Woolworths or, or Asda or wherever it is you shop. They are absolute drivel. They taste like they, you could never, ever, ever long for one of those things. But homemade flapjacks, without that, you know, when you buy something that's that's like a shop bought flapjack, it always tastes like it's been made in a factory. There's a little bit of factory in there. Always that little bit of factory. I don't know what it is. Um, and homemade flapjacks, and they're so simple. Scones, 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 scones. Our kids, we grew up 
making. Fancy right, something sweet? Make some scones. Yeah. <laughs> scones. I call them scones. But scones with cranberries and white chocolate chips. <laughs> chocolate chip scones with with uh, with dates i mean there's nothing quicker if if you have a friend coming round and you think oh i want to pop down the shops and get a, a, a mrs kipling's cake or something like that you know mr kipling mr kipling's is it <laughs> mrs fields <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a friend who's coming around you want to pop and get something before you got back i don't care if that shop was 50 yards from where you live before you got back from that shop, I could have scones baked in the oven. And the house would be full of the smell of sweet scones, whether they were plain. Uh, and and your, your friends would pop into the house, they'd, have, they'd smell those scones cooking, which take minutes. You Americans think of them like a biscuit, like a sweet biscuit, right? Uh, and if you decide you want to put something extra, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of ginger peel or something, or orange peel, or anything else you want to put in them. Oh, my panasconi, my Italian uh, panasconi. Um, uh, you know, when your friends come around and you sort of, you know, offer them a drink and a fresh scone, oh, they, they'll, they'll know they're eating something that's homemade, right? And those scones, that you make a big tray of a dozen scones, I doubt. Bear in mind that you've bought your chocolate chips in, in advance and, or whatever other bits you want to put in them and actually just make them plain, they're, they're just as delicious. Actually, if you make them plain, those scones probably cost you about sort of um, 50 cents to make. There's nothing you can buy in the supermarkets at that sort of price that, that tastes that good. And they've all got that taste, haven't they? Yeah, freshly made. Yeah. So man about us, if you can make a good scone, you rule all of... Australia and New Zealand. I can't make a good scone. I make a fantastic <laughs> scone. Just the best scone. <laughs> now you were talking about your pan of scones. Chris says your bread recipes are some of the best I've seen on YouTube, especially, especially the no-need ones. Did you ever try any panettone in Italy? Oh. So point. <laughs> it's not so point. We, no. Yes, we did try. Tried lots we of ate panettone bearing in mind we were there over the over the winter so we were, were there for christmas yes yes we're there yes, yes. Oh, we had so we ate food. panettone um three marie's panettone yes, yes. um you can buy panettone in sicily that tastes outstanding like really delicious panettone that tastes fresh, you know, because the panettone we buy in Australia, everyone we buy in Australia tastes like sort of just sponge cake um, that, that, that your, your granny bought from Asda and sort of kept in the back of the thing for sort of nine months. But when you buy it in, in Italy, it's delicious. So we wanted to recreate that in an easy way. And I, we must have baked, we had to go out and buy the panettone, panettone um, cases. We must have baked 20 panettones and bear in mind they take a long time to make a panettone and we couldn't get the recipe right it's a tricky tricky recipe um uh, to be to be honest i should have just done the long version but i was trying to make a short version and there is no shortcut with panettone and that's why it didn't work because yeah. we were trying to do a short i mean they were version. very nice we had we were loads. Making. oh but we were <laughs> eating i think we must have put on a stone in a week <laughs> We, we yeah. were eating panettone, yeah. we were throwing panettone out, we were giving it to neighbours, we were giving it to dogs in the street. Yes, and now I have had a lot of panettone and, and in, in Sicily I've had some of the most delicious panettone yeah. and I can never eat it. I can never eat it again Anywhere else. In, in Australia because they taste like sponge cake or even like a very sort of poor brioche with... Uh, and occasionally just as if somebody's rubbed an, an orange rind on the outside of it as they sort of went to put it in the packing box. There's no flavour. There's got to be lots of buttery smoothness in a panettone. It should be very light and very fresh. Perfect, if, I think, if it's got some lovely sort of lemon lemon running through it. Some, sorry, some orange, some... Um, yeah. oh, delicious. Anyway. The Sally said, I love the bread roll recipe. It works and they turn out great. Yeah. Um, a bit earlier on, I'm just going to go back on, Moon over Miami says, maybe too far, but Turkish areas near waterfront are cheap and great. Food 
um, great food people, Ismo, Waterfronts, also Fatia area, I've probably said that wrong, is gorgeous. And she says that because, but later on it says, she says, when she's talking to man about Oz, because they've had a little conversation. <laughs> I'm Greek American, my father's born in Turkey. Turkey is lovely, cheap, and people are great. Well, <sighs> I strongly believe we will be going to Turkey or Greece on this journey. What what we set out to do, and some of you will know, some of you won't, is to try and travel from Australia to Europe across land without flying too often with Jetstar. Um, so, or at all with Jetstar if I ever. I have a special salute when I go past the Jetstar offices and it's not particularly no, very you friendly. Can't, you can't do that. No, but um, so we're trying to do it across land as much as possible. Uh, it's not always easy. You can't uh, get to some places. Amy saying goodbye. Bye, Amy. And Mona's in. She says, hello, sweet travelling duo. Hello, Welcome Mona. Michelle. Now, I'm sorry if I'm... I'm so, sorry if, if I've missed some of the hellos to you, and I know a lot of the regulars, um, lovely, gorgeous viewers are in. Hello to all of you. Well, Jade Eastwood's in, said, you guys should go to Vietnam or the Philippines or Korea. <laughs> Jade, I've just come... <laughs> <laughs> Just come from Korea, Vietnam, but you're talking about South Korea, uh, Japan, and we are currently doing Vietnam and I'm struggling with it. Um, I still love Hanoi and we were tempted to go back up to Hanoi, but the heat is just, just, uh, yeah, it's just too much, too much at the moment. So, uh, so yeah, we we're trying to go across the moment. Uh, China, India, uh, I, I would like to go to Iran, as long as they don't kick off over there. So hopefully then nothing's going to get too sort of... Um... You know, when you talk about, please remember this everybody all over the world, when we talk about Iranians and, you know, this, that and the other, and, you know, this dreadful country, that Iranian people are the most gorgeous, most friendly, most... They're just like you and I, right? They are just lovely people. And they are, they are the people of that country and they are the majority, not by a small amount. The leaders, same in every country in the world, you know, crap floats to the top, as they say. It's, 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 the leaders of almost every country are a complete and utter, uh, waste of our taxpayers money but you know they are not if you take a country like Iran you're talking about what is Iran 60 million I don't know how many people are in Iran but in, in Iran sorry but um, you're talking about you just check me the population mm -hmm. of Iran quickly definitely lead me to it yeah just let's check the population I thought I don't know why 60 million came to mind I think it's 81. not 81.16 million 81 million. 81 million. Mm -hmm. 81 million people in Iran, okay? I guarantee you that 80.9, well, just short of 81 million are fantastic, wonderful people just like you and I, just friendly that you know they've all got mums and dads and Mini uncles Mary, and brothers Iranian, super cool super respectful educated lovely the food's fantastic and then you've got the idiots you know then you've got the ones that think they run it all you cannot be beating up on people and attacking people in a country as if they were just one person, you cannot do that. You know, we've had we've had this in history before. We've we've we send um, people out to to bully and bash on 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 civilian people. And anyway, you you know where I'm coming from. So I would love to go to Iran. Um, uh, we we must ignore 99.9% .9 of what we hear in the news. Iranian people are wonderful and kind and lovely. 
And um Man about answers, no no no, cancel around for the time being. Government will use you. Well we're not going right now. We we're, we're, we're not. Um and, and I actually know some friends that have been to Iran very recently and they've had a wonderful time, but it's a little tricky because, you know, at the moment there's too, there's too much uh, sabre-shaking uh, by the, we talk, call it, the, the people that run our countries are not the one percent, they're the tenth of one hundredth of a percent of people that sit there sort of shouting and sort of bellowing at each other for this and that. And it works both sides, you know, it's on the same on the Iranian side, same on uh, the Vietnamese side and same on every country in the world, you know, it's tiny, tiny little sort of, we have a, so they have a saying in, um, in Canberra, uh, the, go the government is like a cesspool, the crap float to the top. And sorry, pardon me for, for saying it but i truly think it's a typical sort of aussie saying that says it basically straight as it is you know it it, it it's uh it's true um it's it's hard sometimes that uh and we we change our our leaders our country's leaders now and again as if it makes a great deal of difference and it, it makes us a minor, minor bit, of, a bit of difference but the actual powers that be the people that sort of you know Anyway, it's, it, this is not a conspiracy thing. This is just the facts. It's the way it is. And uh, so we would, we will, we wanted to go. <laughs> where did this start? We wanted to go. We wanted to go to Iran and Turkey and Greece and and, and back through uh, so maybe some of the Baltic states and things. There's lots we want to do. So we'll see. Um, you know, there are there are so many. I, I, I we were getting quite sort of romantic the other day about going back to Mexico as well. Yeah. Thinking about you know chance to go into Mexico and it just seems to take so long you know I think if, if we go everywhere we want the chances of getting to Mexico within the next three years are probably slim to nothing but <clears throat> it'll that's happen okay. that's okay. That's okay. We won't be bouncing then, will we? but we do need a break and uh, that's why I came on to chat to you today I am you are going to see what I've decided look while I've got your attention sorry if some of you have left um, uh, I have made some videos that I feel are a little bit Debbie Downer sort of there, there but I've tried to keep some humor in there um, and I wasn't going to either I don't put them up I don't edit them um, but I feel I, I should but if I don't edit them I've got no content to share on on the last sort of uh, month of, of traveling because um, uh, so, so I, I, I feel the content's good enough to put up, but please expect some of the videos are not going to be particularly, uh, you know, joyous and uh, you should visit here because they may actually be a little more truthful and I, forgive me for doing that. Um, uh, let me know, you know, if you say, you, you can send me a message, say, look, see if I don't, I don't want to see these. I probably ignore it, but I'm happy to, you know. But if you, if enough people say, you know, I want to see uh, videos where you say a place isn't worth visiting, and I'm not probably going to ever say that specifically, but uh, showing it as it it's is. showing it as it is, yeah. As Lou says, that's fine. We'd rather have an honest opinion. Yeah, and I don't probably want um, only that sort of. Um, rhetoric as well I, I, I'd, I'd be happy to hear a sort of altern, alternative point of view also if you feel but you know I, ca I can't see any reason why I shouldn't do it um, and in the meantime Michelle and I are going to try and find over the next 10 days or so we're going to have to try and find a place where we can just stop and and then when we do we'll let you know we'll let you know where we are and we'll let you know um, that everything's good and we'll do some live streams and we'll try to recharge the old mojo because we we really do want to to hit uh uh the road with a with a more positive attitude and i think probably we, we we've lost a little bit of our our lust this happens when you travel you know we've you, a lot of you know we've been traveling for four years or over four years now um, and we do stop occasionally for three four five months in places so it's not you know it's not like a backpackers sort of bouncing around but um, 
No, some some days you 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 kind of do uh, lose your mojo and you need to ch recharge, and we've done that on and off, and I think we need it at the moment. So, um, Man About Oz says, just keep doing what you do. Sally says, I love your videos, whatever you post. Mona says, this is very uplifting and open chat, politics and power, often sully the truth. I appreciate your honesty. Uh, Moon over Miami says, you and Michelle are wonderful people. I feel like inviting you over for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And you be careful, you know, when you decide to, you want to travel. And I, I, I always encourage people to travel and see the world. Do try and see some places that are off the beaten track and do not necessarily burn your bridges um, if you can help it. Um, you know, think things through. Yes. And you might have seen that Michelle, how light Michelle and I are traveling of late. We've got those lovely um, little rolling. Uh, Osprey bags that cool. we, we've got and that is almost everything that we have we, we're traveling pretty light that is almost everything that is everything that is everything we have <laughs> and, and our backpacks and our backpacks small backpacks yeah but that's just the camera and stuff and to be honest if we weren't doing YouTube we could no, probably just, just take one bag no we have a backpack each you know the backpack <laughs> Don't need what well, I'm trying to say there, Moon over Miami, and we will one day do a video about how to pack for a long journey. But um, you know, what I'm trying to say there is travel light. Yes, because there's even things in our in our luggage that we haven't actually taken out, isn't there? There's our luggage. That's over a there. bit of a mess over there. Don't show that. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there is stuff in our luggage right now that we've never uh, taken out. Yeah. And there's stuff that we've bought that we know we shouldn't have bought. The man about Oz is saying, uh, get in touch with Turkish Airlines. They give big vloggers free flights. 243,000 is a big vlogger. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not vloggers. We are actually originally a cooking channel. So we have to kind of rebuild our, our, um, our thing. And to be honest, we we do you do you can uh, approach people and ask for um, free things, and you know uh, you, you do get to a stage where you could approach. The only thing is you lose a little little bit of your independence. You know, if you if you're doing, you know, if you get a flight from somebody because they want you to sort of you know say how good their flight is or, or this and the other you lose some of your independence <clears throat> which is fine if their flight's good yes but it also <laughs> means that you you feel an ob obligation to sort of say they're good and they might not be yeah, and then no. there's uh there's also um <clears throat> yeah we'll go into this it's too probably too late in this video to to go down that avenue but i, I can talk about because I, I i really wish in a way that i could teach younger vloggers and youtubers a little bit about some of the pitfalls of what they're getting themselves into because we're older and sort of more you know be, been around the block a few times run a few businesses and run you know done done quite a lot in our lives um, and i see a lot of pitfalls that these these kiddos get into and that's why i think when we went to vidcon i was surprised but also um not necessarily surprised to see so many of them having such a, such a dreadful dreadful time with their lives um and and the, on the uh, anyway on the face of it they look as if they're having a wonderful time and some some of those things can be brand deals you know trying to get into brand deals can actually make your life an absolute misery and then uh, um that's a much bigger subject and we'll leave it for another day i'm gonna get off michelle come come right come around <laughs> this is my new girlfriend i've met here yeah. michelle yeah. Oh, oh, come out, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, love to you all. Thank you for putting up with my rambles today. On it's feeling much here. better now. I'm feeling a, a lot better. We've got a lot of work to do, though. We've got to find a place. We've got to get on, and we've got to Google, Google, and Google, and and Google, Google. <laughs> until we are so Googled out, um, and none of it's true out there anymore. Take it all with a pinch of salt. This place is quite nice for you. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, so it's nice. It's all right. And a nice little place. Love to you all. Take care. And uh, we will see you uh, day after tomorrow. I'm not sure what time it is where you are. I'm going to be putting up a video that I'm editing from Sapper. Really um, I'm going to show you 
how I was almost killed, <laughs> literally, yeah. twice. Uh, he's still here then. <laughs> I'm still living. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, I do, I do, I know what you, yes. Uh, I'm going to show you, <laughs> I was almost killed by a rabid dog, <laughs> how I almost... <laughs> Oh, this Don't stuff. spoil it. No, won't it's spoil dramas, it. Dramas, dramas. <laughs> dramas. Dramas. Anyway, love you all. Take care. <laughs> Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.